Hi, everyone, and welcome to The Drill Down with Marty Stetzer. This podcast is part of our EKTI, Oil and Gas Learning Network, and brought to you jointly today with Energy Conference Network in Houston. The Energy Conference Network is a leading source of business information for energy professionals. They run major conferences and specialized workshops. ECN helps executives solve industry problems at the, as they meet with other decision makers. Today, our topic is the Internet of Things in oil and gas. With an estimated global value of $31 billion by 2020, the digital oil field is the oil and gas industry's hotbed of innovation, now including big data, analytics, robotics, and the industrial Internet of Things, IIoT. I'll be speaking today with Randy Kratoski, former CIO for Chevron Exploration and Production Company, and VP and CIO for Caterpillar. Randy is now an independent consultant and board member of several organizations. Randy, welcome. Thanks, Marty. It's really good to be here. Randy, we appreciate you being part of this effort. I understand your primary focus is looking at the confluence of IoT, artificial intelligence, platforms, and new business models. You bring the perspective of an enterprise CIO to identify how this next wave of technology will transform a large enterprise. Can you give our listeners your background and then expand on your new role as a emerging technology strategist? Randy? Sure, I'm happy to. Um, you know, it, it's interesting. I think this latest wave of technology is what I, what I was really born to do. Um, I spent 15 years at Chevron in engineering and operations, um, production engineering, facilities engineering, um, everything other than drilling, uh, a little bit of reservoir engineering, and then 15 years uh, on the IT side of the house, um, leading up to my last role at Chevron as the CIO for Chevron's global exploration and production business. Um, what was interesting there is I've always been a digital advocate and did a, did a lot of work in those six years in the digital oil field, which is... Uh, um, you know, it's been underway for 15 years, and I think that today's technology is going to do more. Um, I left Chevron to do a short stint at Caterpillar as the corporate CIO uh, to bring the same um, thinking into uh, mine sites and construction sites, Caterpillar's customers, and get experience in a, in a different industry. Um, more recently, I've been spending time really focused on uh, emerging technology. I left Caterpillar about three years ago. Um, became an advisor to a couple Silicon Valley startups and have been really focused on how those three technology trends, IoT, um, cloud, and big data, and AI all come together um, to, to really make possible some new things that, uh, that I've been trying to do for decades. Thanks, Randy. That is interesting background to be able to shift from operations to IT Another interesting shift that you've done is the shift from oil and gas to manufacturing. Can you tell us a little bit about some of the differences that you saw in the way IoT and analytics are being used at Chevron versus the way they're being used at Caterpillar? Um, yeah, you know, it's interesting. I think a lot of people in the oil and gas industry view themselves as laggards in the adoption of technology. Um, after having had experience on both sides in, in oil and gas for many years, and then manufacturing. Um, I, I don't think that's the case. I think that the oil and gas industry um, is actually a technology leader in many cases, um, but has some unique challenges. I think that you know, oil and gas technology is really focused on how do you drive improved operations. It's, it's less about the product that we produce, because in, in most cases it's a commodity. And there's not much you can do except at the, you know, the very end retail service station in the upstream business you produce a commodity. I would say that in manufacturing, the nature of the operations means that they're, they're a lot more similar across factories, um, but they're not the same. So they have some of the same difficulties in, you know, scaling technology beyond just solving one factory's problem. You know, if the goal is to integrate the entire supply chain to accelerate um, order to delivery, 
they have many of the same challenges. I, I would say that um, the, the biggest difference though is oil and gas is an extremely scientific industry. And as a result, you've got a lot of people who are huge advocates of technology. Manufacturing is uh, less science, um, more business. And I think that the, the technology focus there is a little bit different. I would say though that both industries are really focused on these, these three trends I mentioned, IoT, cloud, and artificial intelligence and machine learning. Randy, uh, another question that Joe and I often talk about is the differences in geography between E&P, especially in the P side of manufacturing. As you know, uh, Chevron and other company have thousands of wells, sometimes spread over hundreds of thousands of acres uh, versus a caterpillar that might have four or five plants, but most of the IoT analytic uh, related types of pieces of the business would be inside a plant. Is that true? Uh, since you've seen both sides, uh, is, is there a huge difference because of the wide geography in, in E&P versus manufacturing? Um, no, it's, it's absolutely true. I think that it does create some unique challenges for the E&P industry. You know, I think that yeah, a factory has four walls and typically, you know, it could extend acres, um, but it's unlikely to extend across many square miles like an oil and gas field. Um, you, know, you know, it's interesting. I, I've been focused on technology in the oil and gas industry for 35 years now. And, you know, it really wasn't until recently and, and having the manufacturing experience helped that, it, that I sort of began to understand um, both the fundamental challenge, I think I understood the fundamental opportunities in oil and gas, but the fundamental challenges. And I, and I think you're touching on it. I think that within manufacturing supply chain, within retail, within a lot of other industries, the, the nature of the business is, is um, such that it's, it's a little more contained, it's a little less diverse, and as a result, you can deploy and use technology effectively much more quickly. I think in oil and gas, the, you know, it's both the geographic spread, but also the diversity of operations that create some unique challenges for us. You know, in the case of, of upstream oil and gas, you know, you've got different resource types, you've got different geographies, you've got very large geographies. Um, and while you may have sensors, communications have been a challenge. Um, the other challenge is that a lot of these fields, you know, were developed at different times, one field, may have wells from 20 years ago and a well that was drilled yesterday. And as a result, you know, it, it gets to this fundamental challenge we've had in oil and gas that I think we're on the cusp of solving, which is that in our industry, we have such incredible diversity of resources, of operations, of technology, and of data. And when you think of IoT or digital or data-driven production, you, you know, you're really thinking about how do you deal with that diversity in a way that you can actually drive um, improvements in, in every one of your operations. Staying with oil and gas for a minute, Randy, the digital oil field is a concept that's been around for quite a few years, as you know. What are some of the differences you see in the way we're approaching it now in, with, call it the IoT and the analytics model versus what we were trying to do with the digital oil field when we first started implementing these types of efficiencies. Sure, I, I think you know when I look at it, and I, I'm 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 still very much an engineer um, at heart, and so I, I sort of simplified the digital oil field into three eras. I think that the early era, the early 2000s, um, we were all trying to figure out how to connect up and wire up an entire oil field so that we had all the data uh, we had complete operational visibility, and we were driving changes in, in workflows and processes and transformation. And that was uh, a difficult time in the digital oil fields. I think that what we were trying to do was extraordinarily complex and expensive. Um, a lot of the technology just wasn't there to do what, what we envisioned. I, I think the second generation, which is when I was the CIO for the upstream business, um, we focused on how do you actually get scalable solutions, whether it's real-time production optimization, real-time drilling, um, offshore logistics optimization, onshore maintenance optimization, how do you get scalable solutions? 
Um, rather than trying to figure out how to digitize the entire oil field, we focused on discrete opportunities within those oil fields to, to drive uh, incremental value, um, in some cases, significant incremental value. And uh, the Chevron, we did a program called Upstream Workflow Transformation over a period of five years to deliver 12 solutions into a multitude of oil and gas fields uh, around the world. I incredibly valuable, but at the same time, you couldn't go as far as you'd like, right? You're solving this problem for this field, given the nature of its operations, the technology that's there and the data that's available. I think that the, the fundamental change that is happening today is that, like I say, you've got these three trends. You've got IoT, which really is the ability to more easily capture data, but also more easily interact with things that are out in the field or anywhere, right? It's, it's, it's both that data capture and, and interaction. Um, and it's getting far more economic to do that. You've got cloud, which means compute is cheap and easy, and storage um, costs are approaching zero, and then, which allows you to do AI or machine learning. Really, if you're capturing all that data and you want to interact with field operations, you need to have something more than an engineer behind a screen. You need to have AI, um, which is, you know, is the equivalent of having a thousand engineers looking at your data and deciding what, what to do next. When those three things come together, I think it's going to allow us to achieve sort of that original vision that we, we came up in back in the DOF days of, of the early 2000s. And uh, there, there's some things that we have to fundamentally change in how we approach digitizing our oil fields that will allow us to get there over the next couple of years. Randy, that was terrific. Uh, another question that we've kind of got based on your Caterpillar and your Chevron experience, in addition to the wide geography and, and some of the other engineering oriented uh, ways of looking at problems you described, there's obviously different organization and business models between mm -hmm. Chevron and, and Caterpillar. Chevron is very federated. Caterpillar is likely uh, as not. Does that present some challenges in the way these new types of technologies are implemented? Um, yeah, absolutely. I think that, uh, you know, a federated business model or a decentralized business model is, is always more challenging. Um, although I'd argue that uh, if you can make it work, it's, it's, it's a better model in that it forces you to be darn good. Um, otherwise, you get pushed back from the business units. Um, but I, I do think that the, the organizational implications of, of any of these changes are hard. Um, like I say, I think technology is going to make it much easier. Uh, because you can make changes incrementally, you can you can keep a lot more common with only um, changing small elements of the technology, so they don't have to provide unique solutions for every business yet. Um, but at the same time, you know, uh, change is hard is is probably the best way to describe it. And and most people really don't want to see change unless it's the change that they're driving. Randy, let's shift gears a little bit. You, uh, I understand you sit on the board of an IoT software company. Uh, what perspective has this given you uh, based on both your corporate experience and considering there appears to be so many diverse IoT offerings out there on the market and more coming on every year? You know, it, it, it was interesting. When I uh, retired from corporate life, you know, my goal was to spend more time with emerging technology. Um, as a corporate CIO, you get to spend a little time with that, but a lot of time with the rest of IT. Um, I, I was very fortunate. I connected with a company called C3 IoT, um, became a member of their advisory board back in 2014. And, and it's been interesting because between that and consulting with a number of companies, I've gotten to get a really broad perspective of this next generation of technology, everything from GE's Predix to IBM's Watson to you know, Microsoft Azure and AWS and, and Palantir, and, and there's, there's, a, there's dozens of them out there. What's been interesting is um, seeing how, how this next generation of technology is evolving. I think the, the big challenge for any large company is trying to figure out, you know, who to work with um, because everybody's trumping that they have something unique and different. And in truth, there, there are a lot of companies with something unique and different. Um, my perspective, is that, you know, as I mentioned, there's, there's these three trends, IoT, cloud, and AI coming together. And what they do is, is really 
give us the ability to implement what I'd consider sort of the, the next operations architecture. You know, um, our history has been trying to deal with this diversity and the way we try to deal with diversity in IT is try to knit everything together. And that's complex, it's expensive, it's like getting into a house and deciding you don't like where all the plumbing and electrical goes. You know, it's an expensive proposition to change that. You have to rip all the walls down and kind of change a whole bunch of things. I think that um, companies like C3IoT, companies like Palantir, um, allow you to now create this, this new layer of data on top of your existing systems that, that brings together all that data in, in a way that is not only accessible, which a lot of companies do, but usable. Uh, which means that in a matter of, of, you know, a couple of months, you can develop and deploy new applications. And you can, you know, and there's some huge advantages to this. One is the speed at which you can develop and deploy new applications. The second is the fact that you really don't have to touch the underlying technology and systems within the existing operations other than to connect to them. Um, and the third one is, is, is you actually get to introduce change incrementally into operations. Um, there's, there's a good example recently of, of uh, something that C3 did with a company called Origin Oil and Gas in developing two applications uh, for them. One was uh, predictive maintenance for progressive cavity pumps and, you know, developing this, this data foundation for that particular problem then allows them to focus on another problem, which is, you know, can they use the same data for improving how they identify um, the drilling prospects? Are they likely to drill a, a high producing well or a low producing well? Um, and then they could use that same data to figure out how are their field facilities operating, how are their maintenance staff um, or maintenance activities being optimized. And, and the nice thing about this platform is it lets you actually go after that original vision of the digital oil field that has historically been, you know, too hard and too complex to go after. So I think there's this fundamental shift in how we need to be thinking about the architecture of the, of the systems and data that support our own gas operations. Um, and like I say, the companies that adopt this new architecture, I think, will move much more quickly in driving the performance and production in, in their operations. Randy, this was terrific. Your insights and especially your experience will surely be valuable to the EKTI and Energy Conference Network listeners. Do you have anything to add before we wrap up? Yeah, I just encourage... Um, Companies, you know, not being an operator anymore, um, I'd encourage the operators and, and other companies to get out there and, and really think hard, not, not just on the, the individual solutions, but how these new platforms can be used really to broaden their reach across their operations and drive uh, the transformation that they've been thinking about for, for about a decade and a half now. Thanks everyone for listening. To learn more about the oil and gas industry, be sure to check out our free Oil 101 series on how the industry works at www.ektinteractive.com. Thanks again.